OPEC cuts production for the first time in years, economic woes could hit refiners, and the government opens land to geothermal development. All this and more on today's Energy Scout News. Hello and welcome back to Energy Scout News and Information. I'm Red Byers. And it's official, OPEC has cut its production for the first time in two years. A special meeting ended with the decision to cut November targets by 1.5 million barrels a day. Now, if price continues to fall, another cut is possible when OPEC meets again in December. Of course, that may not be enough by itself. OPEC President Shaqib Khalil said recently that non-OPEC producers also need to cut output to stabilize current prices. He stated that if other producers like Russia, Norway, and Mexico decide not to contribute, our decision will be more difficult and mean more sacrifices by OPEC. The current lull in global demand offers oil and gas companies a chance to develop new resources to meet demand, but they find themselves facing a shortage of different sort. They're having trouble finding people with the skills and experience the field needs. Senior industry executives say they may have already reached their limit if that skills gap can't be plugged. The economic crisis could change the face of electricity and oil and gas industries, but first, a look at today's mergers and acquisitions. Daylight Resources Trust has purchased West Central property in Alberta that includes current production of approximately 550 barrels of oil equivalent per day. Small Cap Strategies plans to buy extreme oil and gas, and Centrica has acquired Simplice Energy for about $2 million. The long-term outlook for offshore drilling remains strong despite recent economic troubles. Diamond Offshore, Insco International, and Noble are all report that day rates and contracts remain strong. ODS Petrol Data reports that there are 83 rigs that can operate in more than 5,000 feet of water, and more than 120 have been ordered for delivery by 2012. Suncor Energy CEO Rick George sees a more rocky future for U.S. refiners. They operate in a business with a narrow profit margin, and George said some may not be able to stay afloat as demand continues to fall. He stated that there will be some real fire sales, and we should actually see some U.S. refiners shut down. Some of the weaker refiners should go out of business. Financial concerns and falling oil prices have companies cutting spending on oil sands projects. Petro Canada's and Suncor are both looking at postponing expansions and upgrading to existing facilities. Now, some analysts say new oil sands projects require oil above $80 a barrel to earn an acceptable return. And now for a look at today's People on the Move. Petroleum Development Corporation is named Geisel Shellam as the company's new chief financial officer. Uno Corporation is named Stephen B. Hildebrand to the board of directors. And Mark West, Energy Partners, is elected president and CEO Frank Simple as chairman of the board. The current credit crisis will likely lead to more takeovers in the oil and gas industry. Bankers and analysts predict cash-rich oil majors and utilities are ready to pounce on smaller companies whose shares have been hit hard as they struggle to fund developments. Exploration production companies are closer tied to the price of crude, while the majors have refineries and other operations to generate revenue. The Interior Department plans to make 190 million acres of federal land available in a dozen western states for development of geothermal energy projects. The government expects to finalize its plans within two months. Developers could lease land with the proceeds shared by local, state, and federal governments. National parks such as Yellowstone remain off limits. All told, the plan could produce enough electricity for 5 million homes. And that's all for today's Energy Scout News. And remember, if you have any news from around the energy industry, you can email us at news at energyscout.com. As always, we look forward to seeing you tomorrow.